Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Littlefield Log, written by R. Carney Littlefield, and that's me. I hope you find all of what I write and produce here interesting. Write, comment, share, let me know what your thoughts are. This substack is sponsored by LightBrosGames.com, makers of the Wild West game West. They create games inspired by God, family, and country. Faith comes first. www.lightbrosgames.com Today's topic is Falling Forward, inspired by Denzel Washington. Fall forward. There's only one enemy, and his name is fear. There's a popular motivational speech that gets rehashed and remixed on YouTube every few years. It's usually titled something like, The Greatest Motivational Speech, or Listen to This Every Day, or Change Your Life Daily. And it features one of the few actors who seem really genuine to me, Denzel Washington. I can't guarantee the following link will still be good whenever you've traveled across this substack, but I encourage you to go watch it now. Counting on what you know. He says something that is so powerful that it is my second substack on this page, and it has to do with being comfortable. He says that everyone looks at college and study and a potential college student and tells them, make sure you have something to fall back on, or no matter what major you pick, make sure you have something to fall back on. The assumption here is that these people are automatically telling the college student that they are destined to fail. The friend or family member who thinks they're being helpful and just means well when they say this, never stop to ask if they should have said it at all. It's just a saying after all. Make sure you have something to fall back on. How often do we think about career and job and the next big steps in our lives? We're trained for it from the very beginning. We're told there's certain respectable jobs to be sought. We're trained in elementary school to love and cherish certain sociological roles like police, firefighter, or scientist. The books we're given, the people who come in for career day, the teachers who spoke with us daily, we're constantly told that our job is what will drive a huge part of our future personality or our future self. We're told from the very first day which jobs would guarantee the most success. Who cares if you love to dance? Become a doctor. Everyone loves a doctor. Friends, we're programmed to believe we're not supposed to achieve our dreams. Those are fine for recess, but not for the real world. Taking risk isn't part of the equation for us. Fall back, stop, rest, relax, just watch some TV. Just become a policeman and earn a salary. Just fall back on being a tax assessor and work miserable hours. Just be average and don't try. Just follow the rules. Just fall back on your old job. Just be average. Just be normal. Just don't try. Just give up. Just... No, I don't think I will. Denzel Washington's speech makes something click in me every time I watch it. I'm not ashamed to say tears stream down my face as I listen. It opens up my heart in the greatest kind of way. I connect with myself and with God when I listen to this speech and it makes me want to chew iron and spit fire and write things like this substack. We're each capable of so much more than we're told. And I'm not talking about basic things like money, fame, or power, pop popular opinion, or things that give you all the, the fame in the world. I'm talking about knowing real happiness in the present moment you're in. I'm talking about living in your purpose, whatever that purpose might be. Faith, not fear, is what it takes. As the saying goes, history is written by the victors. And I think there's a lesson here in terms of how we live our daily lives, how we shop, where we go for entertainment, what we listen to, who we elect, or even what we think in our own heads. The world around us has been engineered to feed your fears. The amount of anxiety medication that exists in the U.S. alone should shock you. I don't need to do the research for you, but a simple Google search will show you that there are over 1.4 billion search results for this simple topic alone. How to get over anxiety. 
I recognize that the search term, How to Get Over Anxiety, casts a very wide net on the subject matter, but this proves my point. The world is focused on fear. Why does this matter when it comes to falling forward? It's simple. There's no faith. According to a recent study, anxiety is the most common mental disorder in the USA in 2022. There's more issues with insecurity and anxiety than ever before. And people are prone to more anxiety for smaller reasons now more than ever. They've lost the ability to believe in anything. It feels like everyone is saying they're struggling, they're struggling, they're struggling. Everything is revolved around the struggle. The quote, losing my faith in humanity, is a very popular term on Reddit and other social media sites. These stories describe people's experiences with the failings of others in their daily lives. People are losing their ability to accomplish even simpler and simpler tasks by themselves. For example, if someone has so much fear and anxiety about ordering a Subway sandwich that they ask for Reddit's help to describe ordering a sandwich step by step. And I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. They actually asked for help. And I'm not blaming them. I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying that I think simple tasks and the faith in oneself are failing day by day. Neurodivergence has become increasingly common. And you skeptics can say I'm exaggerating to make my point, but I don't think I am. Even without looking up the facts and figures, I think you can do your own analysis about the world around you. Ask yourself, does it, does it feel the same as it once did? Are you really, really happy with your daily life? Do you like you, your walk? Do you feel like you walk with a spring in your step? If not, why? What is it? What's different? What made you decide to stop looking up at the stars one day? Friends, I think this is the main difference. I think the truly accomplished people in the world have harnessed the power to overcome their fears, to address them head on and break through them to the other side. They have faced themselves in the darkest hour and come out swinging. They've decided not to let their voices of doubt, uncertainty or fear stop them from living out their purpose on a daily basis. They have the faith and the confidence in themselves and in God to step out of their comfort zone on a regular basis and say, no fear, no, I will not be afraid. Today, I face everything and rise. Redefine fear. Choose to get better at facing it. The older I'm getting, I'm learning there's no secret to it. There's no secret to success. It's just really, really hard work and determination that gets everything done. Those go-getters that you see, those people at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. going to the gym or going to work, those go-getters are simply people who wake up every day willing to put the proverbial foot in front of the other with the faith that they'll make it through the day. They've chosen to ignore the social media noise and focus higher, to look within and without and recognize that they're part of a greater whole. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what, do not, about what we do not see. This often quoted Bible verse should be a great reminder for anyone seeking a hopeful reprise from their daily struggle. Faith doesn't just mean faith in oneself, but it means faith in what we do not see. You don't get to see it. You have to have faith in it. You have to exercise that faith. This verse, as with hundreds like it, should serve as a confirmation that we don't have to have it all figured out right from the start. Faith is not having the answers and still waking up daily and pursuing what you feel passionate about. And you know, I'm so glad to tell you, to tell anybody, to tell myself, to remind myself that the truth is none of us, you, no one, ever has to have it all figured out. But you do need to show up. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. Now here's the one thing that I don't see mentioned when a lot of the unsuccessful people talk about their failures. They talk about their failures. They don't talk about the hopes they had along the way. They don't talk about the little victories that were had, the lessons they learned. It's all about what were the results? Did I succeed? Am I rich? Did my restaurant or bookstore or music store sell, sell out, sell everything? They only focus on the results. 
friends, failure is a part of success. There's no getting around that. How you handle that failure is what determines how you move into your future. If you sit with your failure and obsess about it, you'll continue to fail. There's no way around it. You will be a product of your surroundings, and if you surround yourself with feelings of failure, you'll continue to determine that you are a failure. Garbage in, garbage out. And I'm, I'm so glad to say that I learned that very early on from very loving parents who told me that all the time. What you do will make up who you are. If you surround yourself with feelings of failure, you'll continue to determine that you're a failure. Your thoughts determine your future, and it's up to you to work on that future daily. Fall forward. As Denzel says, if I fall forward, at least I can see what I hit. The hard truth is, is that you're still the one that's going to need to do the work. You're still the one that's going to have to remain hopeful. No one can make you be happy. No one can force you to be hopeful or to be positive. No one's just as no one can force you to be negative or to hate life or to focus on only the bad things. Everything comes down to how you focus on it. Whether you believe in yourself and have faith that you can turn every day into a positive, or you believe that every day will be the negative, that will be the outcome. You have to be the one remaining hopeful. God isn't going to give you all the answers sight unseen. I don't care how much you complain about your life. Prayer works, but you have to be the one praying. You have to be the one to ask for the things your heart desires. You have to be the one looking forwards. You have to be the one who can fall down, look to the skies and say, God, I choose onwards and upwards. Choose to work harder on yourself than the failures that you've had along the way, and you will see that your life changes almost overnight. You know, I believe God doesn't work with you unless you're willing to be the one to do some of that work too. You can pray for fish all day long, but until you get up off your knees, build yourself that boat, get yourself that fishing rod or make it and go where the fish live, God's not going to bless you with the fishes. You can pray for a miracle and you can hope that those fish would fall from the sky. Or you can be the miracle in action daily. Maybe you're not the only one hungry. Maybe there are other people waiting for those fish. Maybe there are other people waiting for your boat and your fishing rod. Choose to see yourself as the miracle that you are and you'll change your life overnight. Better than that, you'll change other people's lives overnight. Family and friends will notice the difference in you. They'll notice the confidence and the faith that you have. Even if they don't understand it, they'll notice it. Now you can choose to say, oh, I don't believe in God. But I can tell you with an absolute certainty that God believes in you. You wouldn't be here reading this or listening to this if he didn't. You have a power that was given to you in such a special way that it's yours and only yours. You have the power to have faith in yourself, to believe in yourself, to rise up above the noise and fall forward. Fall, sure, you might. Fall, you will. Fail, often. But fall forward. See where you're going and dive for it at full force. Write that first book that no one will ever read. Fall forward. Release that song that only a thousand people listen to. Fall forward. Invest in that business and learn more than a college degree's worth of failure in how to fail right. Fall forward. Lose that weight only to gain it again. Fall forward and do those push-ups. Fall. But fall forward. There's no promise of tomorrow. Fall forward. My final thoughts. There's no secret. It's just hard work. Faith is what's needed to inspire you to move forward, but discipline is what's needed to partner with that faith to move you consistently, daily, regularly. It's not about the first sale, it's about the next sale. It's not about your first poem, it's about your poetry book. It's not about the first business, it's about the business that stays strong. You know, I believe true happiness comes from looking at the products of your life and saying, I've done this, I've made this. I've put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. 
I had the faith in myself to see it through. So I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you several questions that walk away with those questions in your mind. What's the passion in your life that drives you? Do you have that passion? If not, I suggest that's where you start. Look inward. Find those passions and work at them every single day because I know you can. You have the power in you to believe in yourself. You don't know where to start? I have some ideas. Comment down below, yell at me, write back, leave a comment. Let's talk. Love, R. Carney Littlefield.